nothing camera I set the settings so we can see the picture nice and good and the stupid camera loses its settings every time and it's refusing to let me adjust anything now come on we want it nice and bright so the camera can see I mean so the viewers can see better do this starting recording because the stew bigger do also I don't know which microphone is being used hopefully it's my headset microphone that this is picking up from alright okay I'll be with you in a minute I've just got to adjust my camera so we can see this so it doesn't remember the settings that I put the camera on which is annoying oh, I'm gonna have to adjust the camera again because the stew bigger do that's what I call anything stupid I call it a stew bigger do so youtubers like Fred Smosh Pinkie Pie and Charlie's a cookie they're all stew bigger do's Oh uh, yeah, and of course, again, I've got to adjust this thing because the stew bigger do. And I can still hear Family Guy going. Yay! I'm stupid. In the background, I really hope that would screw that up because I hate that show so much. Now stay on there, or I will kill you. All right, I just got to adjust this while it's recording again because the stew bigger do. Oh man, that is grainy. I'm losing it. I'm losing my will to live. Okay, we're going to put this on five, which is about fifteen frames per second. That's good enough. It's going to give us a less grainy recording I know Clement is saying get on with it just oh god I gotta start this camera again every freaking time I go to do this it doesn't remember my settings come on turn the brightness up so people can see okay I gotta sort this camera out yet again I set the camera up so it's right and then I go to record and it's all messed up because the stew bigger do and if you don't know what a stew bigger do is then I don't know but that damn stew bigger do is a cause of all my problems I'm just trying to focus it this is how I normally see things when I'm tired actually that's not right because I can't add double vision into this thing although I might be able to do that in post processing but you know uh... this is how I normally see things when I'm tired I'm gonna have to edit myself out moaning at the camera now okay now because of the awkwardness of this program got to make my adjustments while it's recording or it won't work which is stupid it is really really stupid and my stupid focus is stupid blurry stupid and I'm just rambling here because I'm stupid right okay this is recording to make sure we're recording from the mic and not the camera's microphone and I don't know why I'm talking like this so I'm just gonna tap the camera then I'm gonna tap my own microphone so I know which one it's recording from alright alright so yeah that's basically the circuit anyway <clears throat> anyway Alright, I've got to record this whole bit again because I didn't realise that the microphone wasn't working so I was just going and you couldn't hear a word of what I was saying Ricky, stop having a nervous breakdown I'm trying to do something I'm recording this bit again 
In fact, I'm gonna have to record a lot of this again. Uh... Okay, this is attempt number 500 billion. I'm trying to get this recorded. Let's just see if that'll work. Wow, we actually it recording this time. Should have really put in the extra diodes, but... Actually, I'm gonna do that right now. Because you can't... Dang, dang again. Alright, stop recording. Stop recording. Because this always looks more impressive in the dark. It's nice and dark. So here we go. Okay, so here we go. And the camera does not record it. Anyway, I'll just turn this on and you'll see. Doesn't mention what the ideal capacitor and was. No. No. Go away! Go away! Go away! Benny, go home! Come! Scat! Scat! Quick, you stop it, you stupid animal! As I was saying. I was saying. It's me being boring. Just testing how well this video recorder is recording, how well my homemade microphone is working, and whether I can actually get the camera's display to turn off. There we go. Oh, look at that. I like that. It's an infinity tunnel. The microphone is just about to feed back. We. You. <laughs> so anyway, this is testing my high def camcorder hooked up to a low def VCR and my vacuum tube my vacuum tube microphone preamp or is it really two minutes past eight already? I gotta get my dinner done Just doing another test seeing how well the sound is when I'm wearing this headset microphone. I'm not actually going to point the camera at my face because my face is so ugly it will break the screen. So I'll just let you look at something else much more worth looking at. Tails. Alright, so this is short play. Let's see how much. See if we can. Um, change the speed while it's recording. So I'm going to change the long play. Oh, I can change while it's recording. 
That display looks weird on the camera. Doesn't look like that in real life. So let's see how well this stuff looks. If the camera would ever focus. I cannot see anything on the LCD screen right now, but it is showing up on the TV, so I can do it that way. Tubes. 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 I'm going a bit crazy. Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Okay, so I decided to revisit the bottom-fed Tesla coil circuit. Although, I wouldn't actually call this a Tesla coil because there's no primary and there's no secondary. In fact, it's not a transformer at all. But anyway, I decided I'd revisit the circuit because I'm determined to make it work. So I spent the better part of a day making and testing different coils to see which ones would actually work and I can safely say that I'm at a point now where with this coil here as my choke and this coil here as my resonator or my output coil depending on what you want to call it I do get a little plasma flame let me just balance this a little better because I don't want that falling over while it's running. Oh, and don't worry, I did take the tube out of this box before I powered this thing up. Um, I may be stupid, but I'm not that stupid. So this is the transformer I'm using for the filament. Yeah, I know it's a little bit overkill, but it's convenient. It provides round about the right voltage I need, so yeah. And we've got these two transformers here, back to back. That's my isolation transformer. So mains voltage goes in, gets converted to about 24 volts. Then it gets converted from 24 volts to about 240 volts. Then it goes into this doubling rectifier, which gives me about 670 volts. And then that goes into here. Okay, so I'm going to turn this on. Now you can probably hear a lot of buzzing right now because this likes to interfere with everything that is audio. But I'll just start it by doing this. And there we go. Got us a nice little plasma flame. It's being blown about a bit by the fan, but... Yeah, that seems to be working really nicely. Another nice thing about this circuit is that with these particular coils that I've made it doesn't seem to pull a lot of current and I can prove that because I've got this fluorescent light just sitting in there so when I turn this on you'll see the light come on and it comes on quite brightly and when I turn the power off look how long it takes to go out so do that again, because I could still see a little bit of light right at the bottom there. So I'm just going to do that again. Okay, so power's on. I'll turn it off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There it goes, it just went out. So yeah, that stays on for about eight seconds, just on the power that's left in the capacitors. And there's not any kind of magic voodoo going on here with the light. I haven't got any secret battery down there or something powering the light. Because you can look right inside. Or at least you would if you could see. See? Nothing down there. Just a big glob of glue. So all that's going on is that the glowy stuff inside the light likes the stuff coming off the coil. And it lights up. 
And it's not as if this is a complicated circuit. I mean, if we remove everything over here, which is essentially power supply, so that's these transformers, these diodes, this thing here, and just concentrate on this thing, the stuff over here. There's really only four components. Got a couple of coils, a vacuum tube, or valve, depending on what you want to call it, and a resistor. That's it. That's the entire circuit. Oh, and the feedback antenna. I forgot that. But I'm not stopping there. I think I can make this work better. I've seen a few circuits with of this kind of thing, and most of them are powered on about 800 volts. But what if I power this on a thousand volts? I know you're thinking, oh my god! Please, it's no more dangerous than crossing the road. You know, I don't do something stupid like grab the screwdriver by the metal blade with both hands and... Ah! Just kidding. I wasn't even on. Anyway, all I've got to do, I'll just add another bit to the power supply and we'll have a thousand volts to play with. But, just as a matter of interest, I'm just curious about what my power supply is doing at the moment. Now, unloaded, this will give out about 670 volts. So I want to see how much the circuit is pulling that voltage down. So I've connected my multimeter to the transformer's output, the transformer's AC output, and then I run the circuit for a few seconds to see what the voltage is. Then do a little bit of mathulation and find out what the voltage actually is. And I'm going to move the camera where we can see everything. So, turn this on. Make sure it's arcing. Okay. Okay, so 234 volts. But you've got to remember. It's going through a doubling rectifier. So what we've actually got going into the circuit, according to my calculations, that's about 655 volts, which isn't bad, really. All right, schematic time. Well, just for those of you curious, this is the schematic of the deflamulator. That's what I'm calling it, deflamulator. And I've even gone through the trouble of putting down the details of everything. See, we're using GU50 tube, the output coil, as you can see there. I'm, I'll just let you read that out for yourself. And there's the details of the inductor. So yeah, that's basically the circuit. Anyway, <clears throat> anyway, anyway, let's go and see what I'm going to do about the power supply. So, this, you might remember, is my 600 volt power supply, which I've made a slight modification to, because before I was using microwave oven diodes, and instead I'm using two diodes in series in place of each microwave diode, because microwave diodes suck. So, I put a couple of other high voltage diodes now, these diodes are rated for a thousand volts, but I put two of them in series so they both share the voltage even though they should only see about 670 volts across them, but just to be safe, I'm putting two of them in series. So you've got two in series here, two in series here, and that still gives me my 670 whatever volts. Now, the change that I'm going to make to this power supply is this going to add an extra transformer and connect that to a full wave rectifier and that should give me about an extra 330 volts so it's going to take the 240 volts mains and give us lots of voltage the only trouble is I've got a transformer I can use I've got the diodes I can use I've got the re bleeder resistors I can use don't have the capacitors I'm fresh out of capacitors so I'm just going to have to steal a couple from somewhere. So I've took this power supply out of that old Dell that I have that I don't even use because it, well, doesn't work. So uh, yeah, there's not going to be any big loss taking parts out of this power supply to make my new power supply. I'll be able to get the capacitors I need out of this thing. Usually there's two high voltage capacitors. 
usually 200 volt rated. Hopefully there'll be at least 450 microfarads because, well, the more capacitance the better. Taking all the screws out and we'll just take a look inside this. Let's see if I can figure out how this opens. Um, oh, hang on. Maybe this just slides up. Don't know if I have to do any complicated stuff getting this open. Let's have a look, see what see what we got inside. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, this thing's got stuff. Um Alright, there's our two capacitors that I was talking about. And hey, that's not bad. 680 microfarads. Well, that's a lot better than what I was expecting. So, yeah, I'm just going to whip those out and I'll be back. Alright, so here we are. I've built the 330 volt power supply. It's basically another transformer that's been connected backwards. So, what would normally be the secondary is being used as the primary. And what was the primary is actually being used as a secondary. So, this transformer is taking the 24 volts out of this transformer, stepping it up to mains voltage again, and that's coming out, getting rectified by these diodes, and then into these capacitors. Right, I'm just going to plug this in and turn it on. I've disconnected this transformer here, so that is not going, of course if you could see it, that is not connected to this anymore, so that's not going to put any power into that. I'm going to turn this on, just briefly, to make sure we get what we should get. Okay, it's a little under what I expected, but it's working, and that's a good thing. The polarity is the right way around, so we're not going to have any exploding capacitors. So I'm just going to connect this whole thing up now and let's see how well it works. Alright, so now it's time to test this tube with the uh, possibly 1000 volts power supply. And I've just realised that the thing is still showing up. Let's just get that off the screen if I can. There we go. I know the picture's a little bit different at the moment. Well, that's because I did have this working and I tried to film it with the webcam and the webcam seriously glitched out it just did not record it all right let me just turn this on and there we go so I've come up with an alternate solution for recording the output of this um... we'll go on analog man I've got my camcorder connected up to my VCR, so this is going to be a completely analog recording, which is not going to glitch out like a digital device might do, even though this camera itself is digital. So I'm going to turn the power on. Oh, and I'll just take this fluorescent tube out because we don't need that. So hopefully, I'll see what we get. Oh yeah, I've left the I left the safety on. And there we go. A flame. We got flames. Right, okay, well I didn't think it would affect the video recorder that badly. I really thought that was gonna stand a much better chance than it did. Anyway, let's try recording this on the camera's SD card and see what we get. The camera might even just shut off as soon as this turns on, but let's see. There's our flame. And I don't even need to turn the lights down in order for you to see that. But it's kind of being blown about by the fan, so I'm just going to pause and I'll be right back. Okay, well, let's just see if we can get a close-up of that in the dark. So, I'm going to start the circuit. Look at that! Alright, and now I will just do that with the lights on. There it is, everybody. 
I has a plasma flame. Nine hundred volts, more or less. 